Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video I'm going to look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Shinjitsu Battle for Japan. This is a new one from Stone Sword Games. It is a 1-4 to four player game that takes roughly 20-40 to 40 minutes to play. It is a competitive head-to-head -head game where players are going to be battling it out, moving around the board, trying to be the last player standing. So in the game itself, this is set in feudal Japan where rival clans are going to be battling it out and each player is going to be a, playing a samurai from a rival clan trying to gain honor for their lord and gain more control for their lord and they're going to do this by defeating rival samurai and weakening their clans. So throughout the game, this is going to be played in rounds where players are each going to select a card and place it face down then reveal it and resolve it based on initiative order. And the player that is the last player standing will be the winner of the game. So in this video, I'm going to be playing through the solo mode. And this is going to help you uh, either when you're alone or to tailor your deck. As, the, as you learn the game, you have a core deck of 40 cards that is pre-constructed. And then once you get the hang of it, there's a deck building element to this where you can custom build your deck to your play style. So this is a good way to test that out and see how your strategies work or develop new strategies. So you can go against one solo opponent or multiple solo opponents to really kind of test your mantle and see if you are able to hold up against your AI controlled opponents. And then once you have that situated, you can go against players and see how your deck matches up against other players as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this is testing this out and showing you how this works and I did add a couple cards to my deck this all of the materials you do see here are prototype materials and are subject to change they're going to look better than the final production copy. So I only have a limited supply here so I don't have all the cards that are going to be included with this to really go in and, and construct a fully customized deck but I was able to add some additional ones in there so we'll see if they pop up and we'll have some fun with that. So if you're just interested in checking out an overview video that I did, I'll have a link up in the top corner to that video where I cover the main features of the game and then just show you a sample turn. So other than that, as always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and be able to produce this content. If you want to stay on all my videos, also considering that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new stuff. So let's go ahead and head to the table and we'll see how this one plays. All right, so we're ready to move into the game now. So first off, I went ahead and played the Sensei, which is going to be renamed the Master in the core game. And then I'm also going to be going up against Yuki. So with this one, the last thing I need to do is shuffle the decks so that you know that I haven't stacked them. So let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. All right, and then I'll do mine. And the reason why they flip these cards around is I've found uh, through plenty of experience that uh, prototype decks actually shuffle better backwards, which is weird, but it works. So I get a better shuffle out of them when I flip them around, whatever, however the way they're cut. Then I'll draw my initial five cards, three, four, five. I get to add my samurai card to my hand as well. And then from there, then I get to move into it. And this is pretty, this pretty much works the same way as a regular battle. So each round, my player is going to draw one card into my hands, and then I will select one of my cards to play. I don't have to put it face down in this situation as my opponent will draw the top card of the deck, and then I'll resolve it. And so with the opponent's cards, as you're gonna see in a minute, I'll explain how those work. So with my cards, uh, let's see here. So I will go ahead and play them in front of me like this so you can kind of see what kind of options I have at all times. So you can kind of see my strategy, hopefully. And then I get to draw a new card. So I have plenty of options. Initially, I like to try to move the most. So I do have some nice options here for movement with Trained Mind. And this is one of the custom cards that I added in. And other than that, uh, I don't have much else at the moment. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go with Trained Mind and we'll see how that works out. So from there, then we're gonna reveal a card. And so with the AI controlled deck, this is going to have two different sections based on how many hexes away my player is. So I, he's either going to use Calm Defense if I'm one hex away, or he's gonna use Swift Mind if I'm two or more hexes away. So in this situation, he's gonna use the Swift Mind which is an initiative of nine versus my initiative of two. So he's gonna activate first, resolving all of his abilities. 
So first off, he has to move two spaces, and he's going to move towards me as his as outlines on his card. He moves towards my front, so he's going to simply move two, and then he would rotate one if he needed to. But right now, he is facing my front, so he does not need to rotate, and so his card is done at that point. So then we'll go over my card as I have the lower initiative, and I get to move up to two spaces in my front arc. So it's one of the three spaces in front of me, and I get to do this twice. So let's move forward one, and then I'll move over one as well. Then I can also choose to rotate one, so I think I will do just that. From there, then I can search my deck and to draw a card, or I can change my cami up to two branches. So I think I'll do that instead, and I think I'm going to go up to red. And I'm not at yellow right now, so I cannot do that. So then this is going to be discarded. And that will end the round. So at this point, then I would check to make sure I have my maximum hand limit of five cards. Your samurai card will never count for your hand limit. So from there, then I'll move into a new round. So again, I'm going to draw a card. And I have evasive step. That's an instant card. So now I have to choose another card. I am at red now, so I could try to do quick stab, which lets me move one. And then I could hit in front of me. But right now, that would put me here for my attack. And he is not there. So let's see, this one is a diagonal slash, which lets me move back one. So that's not gonna help me at the moment. I have another instance. Uh, I could try for this one, which I think I might do, because that lets me move one space diagonally. So if he picks a, a faster card, it might work to my advantage. So I think I will do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and yes, I'm gonna play that. So that one, is, then I will reveal his card. And so first off we have Calm Defense, which is if he's one space away, which I am, or I would, if I'm one space away, which I'm not, or Rolling Slash, so this is an eight. If I'm two or more hexes away, he moves diagonal one space in his front arc, then he can turn and move diagonally again and then he's going to hit, and he can hit up to for two points of damage, so if he can get into that position there, oof, um, which is going to be his side over here, so he'd have to, let's see, if he moves here, and then again, he would move into one of these two spaces, so it's not going to get him where he needs to be for that. Um... So where is the, so it really doesn't matter too much. He is facing the other direction. So he is going to turn once first, and then he would move into one of these two spots. So it really doesn't matter. And then he would hit. Unfortunately, I'm, or fortunately for me, I'm not there. So I don't take any damage from that. And then it would move over to mine to go. So with mine, I can move into one of my diagonal spaces, which works out that I played a little bit slower attack this time. And then I get to hit for one. So I'll do one damage to him. And then it switches me to the green. All right, so that's discarded. These will move over. Actually, um... I actually could play the Staggering Blow as well. So I must, uh, in order to do this, which I'm gonna take a step back a little bit just so I can show you how cool this stuff is with these uh, instant cards. So this one would be an augment, so it's gonna augment the card that I played, and again, it must be a different icon than the one I played. So I played an attack card, so I must either, this must be an attack or, or a defense card or a meditation card, which this one is a meditation card. So this one, I would be resolved at the same initiative as the one that I played. So it's going to be resolved now. And it's my, I must have given a wound or stun this round for this one to come into play. The With this one, a stun samurai is going to be pushed back one space. Or if I'm in red, which I'm not anymore, I'd be pushed back two spaces. And then with yellow, it would let me do that. So he's not stunned, so it doesn't really help me in that situation so I think I'll just spend it that'll and then I can try to get another card into my hand
Okay, so from there I will draw a new card. And I got Pummel Smash. Okay, so we're face to face right now, so this could be a little risky here. Um, let's see. What can we do? I could go with that. Or I could go with a quick slash as well. Let's see if I can get another wound on him. I think I will do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick stab. And I'll reveal his card. He is also playing a quick stab. So when that happens, when we're tied and it's the same attack type or same card type, which cards are gonna be resolved with defense first, then attack and finally meditation cards. But since both of ours are tied, then it goes to the advantage. And currently I have advantage, so I will resolve my attack first. So with mine, I get to attack and do one damage to him. And then is there anything else that I could do at this point? No, there is not. So then he would follow up and do the same thing where he's going to attack me. So I would also take a wound. So we just kind of traded blows there. So then this will go away and a new card comes out. So I have Taunt. All right, that's not too bad. So from there, what do I want to do? Seems like he's had a fair number of fast cards. I am at green right now, so I could do that. Let's me move back one. This is a good card, but not going to help me at the moment. So, well, let's go ahead and try for this one and see what happens. Because I could always play the evasive step if this doesn't work out for me. So he played a wild block up to two hexes away. It's also, it's a nine to, to three, so he's gonna set his at the same value mine is, so he's gonna set his at, at a five, which is the same as mine. So he would block that attack, and I could draw up to two cards, so I will draw one card for that. That uh, gives me uh, my extra card back, and I think I will, yeah, I'm not gonna play anything else for that, so then moving into a new round, we'll go ahead and draw. So I have another quick stab, Uh, might as well keep at it. So yeah, I'll go ahead and do another quick stab and see if we get if I get lucky here. So he has a wild swing. Oh no. Um, we would be tied for wounds. So I think I'm going to play the evasive step instead. So the, this is a instant card, but this is going to replace the card that I played. So this one will go over mine. I'm going to set it at... Hmm, this one lets me move back one space. So it's gonna get me out of range of him. So I might as well might as well do it first. So I'm gonna set it at nine. I'll activate first and I'll step back. And then it's gonna have me reset to back to my gatehouse. And then his attack would go off and he's gonna hit these three spaces for no damage. So then I will draw a new card. And I have, I am all defense right now. Okay. So what do I want to do? Hmm. Well, that's, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the taunt. So I'm going to play that one there. Then he's going to play, he is up to two hexes away, so he's going to do a war cry. His is a higher initiative, so you can rotate one and move. Uh, and then, okay. So with his card, he's going to move. Let's move, yep, he wants to move towards my left side. And then because my card's slower, he is going to cancel my card out. And then he switches advantage as well. So man, that was rough. 
All right, so then I can't do that. I will draw a new card into my hands. Another river block. Oh, no. Oh, what to do? Um, I have a diagonal slash. Unfortunately, that's on my other side. I need to get onto his other side to make that effective. So that is not going to help me at the moment. So I guess I will play the river block and try to defend against that. We'll see what happens with that. All right, so then he is going to play a horizontal cut. This one is going to have him rotate one, move diagonal one space. So he's going to be trying to get into my rear there. Um, but his attack is slower than my, than my defense. And my, that is going to unfortunately be on these sides here. So... I'm going to have to set it faster. And he's going to hit me anyway. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and set it at a faster speed so I can rotate at least once first. And then I would activate my block. Well, I could set it at 6. That'll still I'll still go first because mine, mine's going to be resolved before his. So I'll do that. Fortunately, my block is going to be the front space and this side, and he is going to always move towards my left side once he's in the front arc. So he's going to move here, and then he does hit those two spaces there. So he's going to hit me for one more, so I am up to two now, so we are tied at wounds. And then finally, it's going to come back to me as I have my second section at initiative two, which I have to move and then I can rotate. So I'm going to move forward one. Do I want to do that? Um, or I could rotate. The diagonal slash unfortunately is on my other side at this point, so I'd have to turn all the way around just to try to use that. Hmm. Yeah, I will move forward one and then turn one this way. Okay. So that'll take care of that. All right, uh, I get to draw a card. Deep Meditation, so it's another movement card. All right. So that's a slow card. He is facing, he's two, roughly two turns away from me. So Deep Meditation would kind of get me potentially into a better position to get towards his back and maybe buy me a little bit of time here. Um, or I could play, I could go defense, but he's already starting to move around my backside, so I don't know if that's going to help. So, hmm. I think I'm going to risk it. I'm going to try the deep meditation and see what happens here. See if I get lucky. All right, so we have the horizontal cut. His is a faster initiative, so he's going to turn one this way and then he has to move diagonal he'd either move into my space or this space so he doesn't want to collide with me so he's gonna to have to move away then he hits these three spaces here so no effect there so that worked out in my favor and then I can move one first and then I can rotate twice so that's gonna keep me in there then I can drop to two cards or I can view my opponent's hand which isn't going to help me in here, but then I can switch to yellow, so I'll do that. Okay, uh, from there, new turn, or new round, so, ooh, that's a powerful attack. If I get that to go off, that'd be, that'd be really helpful. Oh, let's see. He's had a lot of fast attacks, so there's a chance that it might... I might be able to get it off. Um, sure, let's go ahead and try it and see if we get lucky here. It's a quick stab. It's one space away. It would. He's going to rotate and attack here. So his does not work, and then mine goes off, and I'm going to hit him in the front for two damage. All right, so I'm up to four on him. One more, and he is toast. Now I have to discard one card. I think I will discard this one here. And then I have to return to my gatehouse. 
So then a uh, new round, I'll go ahead and draw a card. So I have wild block. All right, uh, let's see. I am all defense at this point, so, hmm. I have that, but again, I'm on the wrong side of things. I'm gonna do the calm defense and see how that helps. So he has the dash down strike up to two hexes. It's a six, so I'm gonna set mine at six. He has to move forward one space, so it's gonna be his front arc here, so it'd be either my space, front or the side there. It lets him rotate one, and then he attacks the front space for two. So I got lucky there. I do have defense on these arcs, so I would have been able to defend against it, but it's better that he missed. And then I have a diagonal movement, so I'm going to move back one. And do I risk the rotate to try to get in front of him on the side here to get this into play? Let me move back one space, so I'd have to be... Hmm, that's a tough card to pull off. Uh, let's see what I pull here first. So I think I'm not going to rotate, so I'm going to keep him where he is. And then I'll draw a new card. Okay, so I have Firm Mind. This is a good one for movement. I am right in his front arc, though. So I think I'm going to have to go with the river block right now, and we'll see what happens with this. So, yep, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll play river block, and then he's going to play wild block. So we're both blocking. I do get to rotate one and then I can move. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward one. And do I rotate? Right now I'm in good position. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stay there and, and risk it. Okay, so that's that, and his is done, so then we'll, I'll draw a new card. It's another Firm Mind, ooh. So, oh boy. Um, I could try for the Diagonal Slash and hope that he doesn't move. If he moves, I'll still get him. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it and see what happens. I'm gonna go with the Diagonal Slash, this could be it. He plays a horizontal cut, so it's a rotate one. And he's gonna go into this space because he's gonna try to get towards my backside. He's gonna hit me for one. So I take my third wound. Then it's gonna come over to me as my attack was slower. I get to move back one space if I want to, which either one of these spaces is going to work. So I'm not going to move, and then I will attack, and that will be two damage to him. So that is going to finish him off. Close battle, three to, three to, to six there, but yeah, he had four wounds on him to my three, so very, very close. So I hope you found this video helpful in deciding whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. If you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page or drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creator would love to hear from you and is more than happy to answer any questions you have. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.